get started with some polymer clay. I'm using Primo and Sculpey. I mixed up the following colors. I'm not going to teach you about color theory. You're also going to need some watercolors. I have a plastic thingy that I use as my palette. White glue, acrylic paint. I also have some gouache. I have my plastic thimble thingy. Some cutting tools. My elephant ear scraper and also some pointy tools. If you don't have any pointy tools, you can use toothpicks. And I also have some small acrylic brushes. You can also use some tweezers if you need to. I also forgot to film my rolling pin. Put them in there too. Starting out with the orange peach clay, I'm going to flatten it out. I'm going to do the same thing with my white clay. It's a mixture of white and translucent. I'm measuring the approximate sizes of them so I can stack them together. It doesn't have to be super neat, I'm just making it into a square. I flattened it out a little bit more and then I'm going to slowly roll it into itself so it becomes a spiral. Roll it out a little bit so that it's just a little bit longer. Taking your two other colors, I have a light green color and a darker green color. I'm going to put all three together and slowly start rolling it into the cane. So I think the one mistake that people always make when making canes is that they go too fast. You have to go very slowly while you're rolling it to maintain the shapes and designs that you have in the cane. I'm very slowly pinching and moving the clay around so that it becomes a more proper cane shape and I'm doing it very slowly. Taking the darker green color, uh, this is your nori or the seaweed, I'm going to flatten it out. I'm measuring the cane so far so that I make sure that I have enough of the green clay to fully cover it. You might have noticed that a lot of my clay is very marbled, that's my personal preference. If you want to have flat blended colors, that's totally up to you as well. I'm going to scrape the clay off the table really badly. Roll all of your cane inside of the seaweed. I'm using the same rolling technique to create the cane. If you're unsure of the design of your cane, you can take a very, very sharp knife to slowly cut the cane just so you can see the inside. I'm going to take my white translucent mix. This is the rice and I'm going to make more because I did not make enough. This is me measuring it and then realizing I didn't make enough. See, look, 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 I didn't make enough. Now that I have the proper amount, I'm going to continue on rolling my clay. I'm going to cut off any excess using my scraper. This is why I really like using it. You definitely don't have to make the canes as large as I do. I'm making mine very large because I want to make a lot of sushi. I'm going to continue rolling it, and I believe the term is reducing it in size. You have to go very, very slowly. I uh, sped this up because I was going so slow. You have to apply even pressure everywhere around to make sure you don't warp the design. If you go too fast, you will make a very ugly cane, and then nobody will like it because it's all smushed. I'm going to cut the midway section again just to make sure that the design is still good. Look at that pretty sushi. I'm measuring out the cane 
so that it is the approximate size that I want. Once you have your canes to the approximate size that you want, you want to let them rest for as long as you can possibly take it. I left my canes to sit for maybe around 45 minutes. I'm using this kind of motion to apply even pressure around the canes so that I make sure that I don't ruin the design. Allowing your clay to rest will make it a lot easier to cut, but also using very sharp tools will make it easier to cut as well. I'm lining up my sushi pieces so it looks like a sushi roll. I believe the actual term is a scribe tool. I'll be using this to carve designs into the sushi. The three designs that I'm using is a swirl on the crab part, just lines in the green part, and then a circle type design around the seaweed. You'll be able to tell because I had a hard time describing this. I'm also using a different shaped tool to poke little circles so it looks like rice. I just overestimated the size here. I was going to put six, but only five is going to fit. Once I'm done making the designs, I'm going to bake or cure it. Make sure that you bake your clay according to the instructions of the clay that you're using. I'm using my scribe tool again to dip into some hooker's green acrylic paint and I'm going to use it to fix any of the seaweed that I deem to be not as aesthetically pleasing. If you made it this far, have you noticed that I really hate doing voiceovers? Using white wash acrylic paint, I'm going to use it over any of the rice pieces that have been discolored. Try to use a very small paintbrush while doing this. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that bell for all notifications. I think I'm done doing the voice now. Taking some orange watercolors, I'm going to use it to paint some of the insides of the sushi. This is completely optional, I just want a different colored looking sushi without having to make separate canes. You can also use some sealer, I'm using a gloss sealer, I believe mine is from Liquitex. Once everything's all dried, you are done! My sushi rolls, I want to be on a sushi platter that I made, so I'm going to just take some regular white glue and glue it onto the wood platter. Once it's all dry, you're all done. Obviously, you can use more sealer or varnish if you want to. My sushi platter is all done. If you're interested in these, I do have them available on my Etsy shop. I will link it in the description below. Doing voiceovers is very boring. If you like to hear my voice more, don't do anything. Thanks. Also, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.